One Man's Family, brought to you with the makers of Chase and Sanborn Coffee and Fleischmann's Yeast. One Man's Family is dedicated to the mothers and fathers of the younger generation and to their bewildering offspring. Today we present Chapter 13, Book 64, entitled, Was the Night Before Christmas? Well, tonight is the annual Barber's Christmas Eve celebration, when the tree is decorated and loaded down with gifts and mementos of the season. That will be this evening, but this afternoon, Clifford, Jack, and Nicky have gone into the country and selected this year's Yuletide tree, and are now back at the family home, preparing it to be placed in its traditional corner of the big living room. All right, Jack, hold up the butt end while I nail these cross pieces on, huh? Yeah, sure. Let's see, where's Father Barber? I don't know, usually around supervising this part of the activity. Mom took him downtown by the ear for some last-minute shopping. Oh, look here, not actually. Uh-huh. He was supposed to have bought something weeks ago, and Mom just found out he hadn't done it. Did she really take him by the ear? Well, anyway, figuratively. <laughs> Mother Bob is just the little lady who can do it. Uh, how about another nail? About here, Cliff. Mm, yeah. Uh, look out for your finger. Yeah, I'd say that was pretty solid. Can we uh, take the tree inside now? Sure, why not? Well, if Mother Bob is out... Oh, that's okay. She arranged the, rearranged the furniture in the living room for the tree. She knew we'd be bringing it in. Oh, and what's holding his back? What a... Well, you two bring the tree, and I'll bring the piano wire and the tools and, and open the door for you. Uh, here you come. Yes. Uh, 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 isn't a Christmas tree to win all Christmas trees? Watch your steps. You don't stumble. Uh, we'll have to cut a couple of feet off the top. And, hey, hold it till I get the door. Uh, the door must be locked. Uh, no, it's okay. Uh, Just caught for a moment. Uh, okay, Nicky, let's go. Right, right behind you. Uh, Oh. Tight squeeze. Easy with it. We mar the woodwork mm-hmm. or the hall paper and we'll have Mom on our necks. <laughs> we will that. What's going on out here? I say, yeah. what's going on out here? Gangway, Cousin Jediah. What sort of lame brain tricks you young folks up to now? now back up, will you, Cousin Jediah? Bringing firewood in the front door. Easy now when you make the turn through the arch yep. into the living room. Yeah. Bringing them it. with firewood right into the yep. front room. How's it back there, Nicky? You hitting anything? It'll be all right, I think. Go Your mama's not going to like this, Clifford. Uh, easy there, Jack. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Your mama's yeah. not going to like this, Jack. Hold it, hold it. Cliff, that limb's going to hit the table lamp. No. I got it. All right, go ahead. Yeah. And he's not going to like this, Nicholas. Just take it right over to the corner and set your end down about six feet from the walls, Jack. Yeah, okay. The minute Fanny steps out of the house, folks start carrying firewood into her front room. Uh, okay, I guess we can set it up now. Green firewood. Are you ready, Jack? Yeah, set her up. Green right. firewood with a limb still on. Okay, Nicky, up with it. Right up. Okay, here we go. I suppose That's you're going to saw her up right here in the living room. Uh-huh. Right? Don't think that top's going to touch the ceiling. Easy, though. Yep. Wave it to the young ones. When the cat's away, the mice will play. Well, how is it? Hey, it's going to be just right. Old saying, when the cat's away, the mice will play. Well, I say, that's just about perfect. Tassel missing the ceiling about eight inches. Oh, it's just right for that big electric star. Mm. That's an old saying. From the capsule day, the mice will play. Oh, hello, Cousin Jediah. But you say hello now, for I've been here for days. Oh, really? Didn't you hear me talking to you? Well, we were busy setting up the tree. Fanny won't like this. Why not, Cousin Jediah? Fanny won't like this, Jack. Oh, you want to bet on it? Bring in green firewood in her living room. Oh, but see here, Cousin Jediah, that's our Christmas tree. No. Certainly, tomorrow's Christmas. No. Sure. Every Christmas Eve afternoon, we put up a tree, and then this evening, the whole family gathers, and we decorate it and put on our presents. You mean there's going to be presents? Oh, hey, don't tell me you don't know about Christmas. Been a long time, Clifford. Don't tell me they don't have family Christmas parties back in Bloomington, Illinois. Been a long time. Last Christmas tree I had was when I was maybe 12 years old. No kidding. Last lame brain Christmas tree I had, I was maybe only 10 years old. Well, we'll certainly have to make up to you. Last Christmas tree, I was maybe only eight years old. Hey, don't look now, but your age is shrinking. <laughs> Last Christmas tree, Well, I... you'll get a big kick out of tonight, then. Who's going to be Santa Claus? Why, you... I know already. You don't have to tell me. I've got to be Santa Claus. Oh, look here. But, Cousin Janiah, we don't have a Santa Claus. Where we do it... What kind of a half-wit Christmas party you call that? Of course there's a Santa Claus. But we have a traditional way I'll of... be Santa Claus gladly, gladly. Carry a big pack on my back. But, hey, cousin Jediah... Distribute the presents. But all the presents... Come are... down the chimney, jolly old cuss. Make the children laugh. But if you'd let us oh, explain... Oh, I wanted to be Santa Claus. Oh, my life, I want to be a Santa Claus. Well, couldn't you... I <clears throat> tried in a department store. They wouldn't have me. Oh, no kidding. Tried the Salvation Army. They wouldn't have me. Well, maybe it's your voice. Go to Santa Claus Lane Parade in Hollywood. 
Never got an answer. <laughs> Even offer to furnish my own Santa Claus suit complete with patent leather boots, red stocking cap, and a two-foot snow-white beard. Nobody would help me. Jove, that's tragedy. Even offered to furnish my own pillows to give me a prouder stomach. Uh, did you say prouder stomach? Real genuine goose feather pillows. <laughs> and they still wouldn't take you? Genuine goose feather pillows. Handed down through the family from mother to son for I don't know how many lame brain generations. Well, that's all very tragic, Cousin Jedi, but if you come busting in tonight playing Santa Claus and throwing our old traditional routine out of kilter, Dad's not going to like it. Your father's a fine man, Clifford. Hank's a fine man. And he's still not going to like it. Tickle him to death to see me and my Santa Claus outfit. Tickle him to death! Oh, Hank's a fine man. <laughs> Surprise, 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 and you don't have to wait until Christmas. The new, improved Chase and Sanborn is here right now. The most satisfying coffee you ever tasted. So, taste it. Taste it now. Nobody can tell you how greatly the new Chase and Sanborn is improved. Call it twice as good or ten times as good. Say that it's the richest, most flavorful coffee money can buy. And that still means taste it, because this is an amazing new coffee experience. Lift the cup to your lips. That's the only way. Take a sip of this new blend. That first swallow is like money from home. We're getting finer coffees now, so you're getting more glorious flavor. At its best, vacuum packed. As soon as the new Chase and Sanborn is roasted, this added goodness, multiplied in the blending, is quickly sealed in. No other container ever invented can give you so much flavor. Taste it. Ask your grocer for improved Chase and Sanborn, the new coffee sensation. Well, it's Christmas Eve at the Barber's. The great Yule log's been placed on the fire and will burn all tonight and all day tomorrow. There's a shower of crystal and red and blue ornaments already on the tree, and a smell of fir boughs and spice and cider and other Christmas night perfumes. And the excitement and good cheer among the Barber's, young and old, is something to behold as they put the final decorations on the great tree. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. If you and Joan want to have a giggle station, just go on out in the hall. We were just holding a conversation. <laughs> Consisting mostly of giggle, giggle, and oh, yeah. <laughs> well, if I may have the attention of you all, I would like to call the roll for a report on Christmas tree fixtures. Where's Cousin Jediah? He's upstairs putting on his Santa Claus suit. Oh, no. He's been upstairs putting it on since 4 o'clock this afternoon. <laughs> and if he never gets it on, it'll suit me. Well, that's got nothing to do with tree decorations. Uh, Mom? You had charge of popcorn balls. Uh, well, the popcorn balls are all made and hanging on the tree, with the exception of the ones eaten by my son-in-law, Nicholas Lacey, <laughs> and my daughter-in-law, Betty Carter Barber. <laughs> I would have sworn that Betty saw me feel sick, but this is delectable tidbit. Uh, we call them popcorn balls over here. <laughs> <laughs> Betty, did you eat a Christmas tree decoration? I confess, I did it with my pearly white teeth and my ruby red lips. <laughs> <laughs> all right, now, all right. All right. Uh, Margaret, uh, you were in charge of uh, of stringing popcorn on string. Well, there they are. The tree's all covered with them. <laughs> Short and to the point. <laughs> yeah. uh, Dad, you were in charge of the cotton snow under the tree and the silver rain on the tree. Yes, yes. Cotton snow is under the tree. Silver rain is on the tree. <laughs> <laughs> and Dan Murray. Present. You were in charge of all breakable ornaments. That's right. What's your report? That considerable breakable ornaments have been broken. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard the report that all that remain whole are now in place on the tree and give it a highly festive atmosphere. Huh? Don't take so much credit to yourself, Dagmar. <laughs> I should say not. I was in charge of the tinsel and paper mache drapes, and they look pretty doggone good themselves. Mm, they're all on top? Every single one of them. Uh, Joan, are all your silver and blue bells on that tree? All tinkle bells present and accounted for. <laughs> <laughs> Hazel, you were in charge of all decorations exce- uh, excepting the tree. It's a pleasure to report there is a holly wreath in each of the front windows and one on the front door. <laughs> Beautiful, too. Oh, thank you, Mother. <laughs> Also, there are spruce boughs decorating the stair railing, along with a great big Christmas stocking with each person's name on it. Yeah, and they're full of nuts and candy and oranges and one for everybody. Have you been peeking? Well, sure I have, Mom. <laughs> well, that's my effort. Oh, yes, the decorations over the fireplace were in my department, too. Well, I think we can give our sister Hazel a big hand. Yeah. Well, how nice. 
And now, Jack and Nicholas, who represent our electrical committee. Well, <clears> first <throat> I'd like to say that anybody who steps on one of our light cords and causes a short circuit will have his favorite present taken off the tree and jumped up and down on by me personally. <laughs> oh, uh, Mickey, uh, anything to add? Oh, by all means. Oh, Mickey wants to make a speech, you know that, Blue. <laughs> well, ignoring a bit of wifely impertinence, I wish to report that all the regular tree lights are in place as usual. And I'd like you to note at the tip of the tree... A new star of Bethlehem, which I was at great pains to obtain, and which I think will dominate the tree once the lights are turned on. Well, what are we waiting for? <laughs> sure, turn on the lights. Let's start getting the presents on. We want presents. We want presents. Oh, we want presents. Hey, quiet. We quiet. want presents. Quiet. We want presents. Quiet. Hi, <laughs> Joanna. Uh, there's one more committee. The Midnight Snack and Eats Committee. <laughs> Headed up by Betty. That's my wife you're talking about. Yep. Mother of three beautiful daughters. Yep. All tucked in for the night, dreaming beautiful Christmas dreams. Hey, I thought Aunt Betty was going to talk about food. <laughs> I am, Pinky. After all the presents have been brought out and put on the tree, there will be a buffet supper consisting of... Dirty sandwiches. That's right. And a big... Oh, ball. Ball. You've been peeking. Popcorn balls. Hey, any way for drinks? Coffee. Sure, coffee, but... Apple cider. Right. And for dessert... Okay. Hey, who's the committee around here, anyway? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so much for committee reports. Now we're ready to turn on the tree lights. Oh, oh, okay, hold it, everybody. All right, Nikki, turn out the living room lights. Living room lights going out. Give me your hand, Grandmother. Yes, Margaret. Okay, now on with the Christmas tree lights. Christmas tree lights coming up. One, two, three. There. Oh, oh beautiful. 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 Oh, we've never had a prettier tree. Never. Hey, why doesn't Cousin Jediah come on down? He's missing all the fun. Yes, Henry, it's too bad. What's he doing? Putting on his confounded Santa Claus suit. Yeah, but what's taking him so long? Henry, you'd better go up and see if he's all right and persuade him to come down. Well, if he hasn't sense enough to come down... I'll go up, Mom. I'll be right back down. All right, okay now, everybody. The next step is for everybody to make himself comfortable in front of the fire for the ceremony of putting the presents on the tree. Hey, somebody get the sleigh bell! Poor old Santa Claus. Awesome, give the password. May I come in, Cousin Jediah? That you, Jack? Yeah. Come in, come in. Uh, halt. Get the password. Old Spanish war pistol. Hey, Cousin Jedi, you're missing all the excitement and fun downstairs. Come on down. I'm going to be Santa Claus. I'm going to be Santa Claus the way he ought to be. Oh, but you don't have to be Santa Claus. Oh, them wet Santa Claus for me. You think I want to play Santa Claus with the suit busting at the seams? Oh, is that what's happening? You think I want to play Santa Claus with buttons busting off and... Lying around like a prize fighter, Keith. I wondered what the needle and thread were for. Think I want to play Santa Claus with the seat of his pants? All that out by mothballs? Well, not mothballs. Yes, sir, mothballs. Look at the seat of them trousers. Yeah, but you'll be up here all night sewing it. I can sew. Oh, yeah, I know. Taught by my mother. So, man, darn. Don't worry about me. I can sew. But you're missing out on the family party. I can sew. Well, I've got to go back down. Why don't you come with me? I have a little trouble threading my needle sometimes. Well, have a good time. i got to get back. Come on down any time you feel like it. And this is how we will bring the presents out. Each family group will take these sleigh bells, yes, and leave the room and go get their presents. When they are ready to return to this room with them, ring the bells and shout, Close your eyes. Then everyone must close his eyes while the presents are brought in and distributed on the tea. Are there any questions? Uncle Paul usually said all that. Where is he? Yes, that's right. We don't know where your Uncle Paul is tonight. We hope he's in good health. And we know that he is thinking about us as we are thinking about him. Yes, indeed. Oh, Jack, did you see Cousin Jediah? Oh, he won't budge until he gets his Santa Claus suit sewed up. He gets it sewed up? I'm afraid he's had it a long time. It's moth-eaten, coming out at the seams, buttons popping off. Huh? Didn't you tell him to forget it and come on down? He's going to be Santa Claus or a bus. Oh, that <laughs> seems kind of pathetic. Well, if it is, he doesn't know it. Well, we've got to get the ceremony started. Now, who's going to be first? Who wants the sleigh bells first? Henry, why don't you and I start things off this year? Huh? If you wish. Okay, Mother Barber. Here's the sleigh bells. Hey, um... I think I'll go along with you folks. Why, Clifford? Well, I was going with Skippy, but since he and Penny fell by the wayside and had to be put to bed, I, I think I'll go with you. Yeah, yeah. Come along, boy. Come along. We'll let your mother carry the sleigh bells, and we'll carry the bells. How could Skip and Penny go to sleep on a night like this? Yes, that's what I was 
Oh, poor babies. They've been anticipating tonight so hard they just couldn't take it. No, I don't suppose popping out of bed at 5 o'clock this morning helped any. Can you imagine? They woke up at 5 this morning to be sure and be ready for tonight. And then both of them fell fast asleep by 7 o'clock. <laughs> well, that's life. Hey, they're coming. There's a the bell. Oh, they're certainly wasting no time. Grandmother had hers and Grandfather's presents all laid out on her bed. Oh, peeking, huh? No, Dan, not really. Oh, guys, here we come. Everybody close his eyes. They're closed, Grandfather. Well, come along yourself, Henry, and watch where you're walking. Well, keep those eyes closed. Now, here we come. <laughs> Sandy, you buy heavier presents every year. I swear you. Well, you handle them with care. Now, easy down on the floor. Well, my dear woman, when the laws of gravity step in, I have nothing more to do with the matter. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've got my presents on. Can I help pick up, Mom? Well, you'd better. Your father's no yup at all. I like that. Who thought up Christmas presents anyway? Well, it wasn't you. <laughs> oh. <laughs> there. Hey, I think that's everything. All right. Open your eyes and bless you all. Oh, I say what beautiful packages. Mother, they're lovely. I say, Claudia, are our wrappings uh, as good looking? <laughs> Oh, fine thing. Now you know who wrapped the packages in our house. <laughs> well, um, who's going next? Well, Nikki and Claudia, let's go next. Sure, why not? How about it, Margaret? Sure, that's okay. I just want to sit and look at the presents. They're wonderful. Yeah, the Daniel Murray branch of the family will go right after you folks. Right, huh? Joan, the sleigh bell. Okay. Come on, our presents are just out in the hall closet when well, we brought them over this evening. We'll only be a moment, so be prepared to close your eyes. You can trust us. And still no cousin Jediah. That man. I stopped by and knocked on his door when I was upstairs just now. What happened? Well, I said, for heaven's sake, Jediah, come on down and join the fun. Turns you down, huh? Oh, he said, coming, Fanny, old Santa's coming. (laughs) (laughs) That fellow's eccentric. Oh, he's a sweet old guy. The more I see of him, the more I enjoy having him. Hey, Hey, that's the front doorbell. Henry, maybe it's Paul. Huh? I'll go see. Uh, excuse me, Aunt Betty. Oh, that's all right. I've been walked on before. Coming. Coming. Hey, tell that Claudia and Uncle Nicky not to come in till I get back. Claudia, where are you going? I'll be right down, Nicky. I want to see if I can get Cousin Jediah downstairs. Well, hurry it up. He's just got to come down. Cousin Jediah. Coming. Five o'clock is coming any minute now. May I open the door? Gladly, gladly. Oh, Cousin Jediah, come on down, please. Let's see now. Which one are you? <laughs> I'm Claudia. No. Please, don't sit there sewing on that old moth-eaten Santa Claus suit. No, not Claudia. You won't come? Not Claudia. Margaret? <laughs> You're mixed up. Margaret's Hazel's little girl. Oh, come, put that down and come with me. Oh, will be long now. Old Santa will be coming down the chimney any minute now. Claudia! Well, I can't wait, but please come on. The whole family's having a wonderful time. Come and be with us. It's a cablegram to the whole family. Oh, what in the world? Pinky, bring that here. What did you say? Yeah, yeah, look, a cablegram to the whole family. It says to Fanny and Henry Barber and the whole family. Oh, sure, sure, sure. Come on, open it. Here you are, Father. Yes, yes. It must be from Paul. What does it say, Henry? Yes, yes, it's from Paul. Well, what do you know? Oh. This is as close as I can come to being with my family this Christmas. My whereabouts is being kept secret for purpose. But I can tell you that I'd rather be there with you tonight than where I am. Love to all. Poor. Where do you suppose he is? Probably India or China or Russia. Oh, you're just guessing. Everything has been deleted that would give any indication. Well, anyway, I feel as though we had part of him with us now. Here we come. Everybody close his eyes. Oh, here they come. Well, I took you long enough. I say, close your eyes. We're about to make an entrance. They're close. <laughs> If you could only see yourself packaged up to your eyes. Oh, oh my God, God. hang on to them. Oh. I, I've got them quite oh. oh, good. My arms are so loaded. Oh, Here, God. put them all down in front of the tree, and then we can scatter them about. Right up. Oh. There. Mm, wait till everybody sees what we put on the tree. Well, hurry up so we can. I say, let's shove all these large cumbersome packages under the tree. Hmm? Large cumbersome packages, he says. Yeah. Well, you mean cumbersome like a pair of table lamps for our living room? Oh, I see. <laughs> Electric blanket for Dan's in my bed. Oh, listen to the people. There, I guess everything's on. Uh huh. 
That's all. Open your eyes and be glad. Oh, oh look at the package. Look at the Jeepers. Aunt Claudia and Uncle Nicky just slopped over with presents this year. Oh, golly, beautiful. All of the presents wrapped in silver and red paper. What an exciting array they made. Yes, yes. Christmas. Okay, who's next? How about our family? Yes, let's go next. Come on, Dan. Come on, Ma. Oh, just a minute, darling. Uncle Jack and Aunt Betty haven't gone yet. Oh, you folks go first. Sure, you go first. Jack and I'll be last. Okay, here's a sleigh bell. May I carry them? Sure, go right ahead. Put them around your neck. Oh, I'm not around my neck. All right, family. Let's go get our presents. Oh, I get to carry grandfather's and grandmother's present. Oh, the heck you do. The heck I don't. Boys, well, is that any kind of a conversation for potential Santa Claus? <laughs> Father and Mother Barbara's presents seem to be the choice morsels in the Daniel Murray family. <laughs> Naturally, not. <laughs> Henry, show Claudia and Nicholas the cablegram from Paul. Cablegram? I say, where is the old boy? It doesn't say. It's just a Christmas greeting. Oh, cablegram? That's from across an ocean. Sure. Well, at least he's thinking of us. When did it come? While you folks were out for your presents. Oh, yes. I went upstairs to see Cousin Jediah. Still sewing on his Santa Claus suit, huh? Oh, it's tragic. So cheerful and having such an awful time up there. Well, if he won't come down, he won't come down, and you can't make him. He's a free agent. Dan, let's go up and try to persuade Cousin Jediah. Well, I'm game. Margaret, you and Hank and Pinky get the presents out of the library and bring them in the hall. Okay, Dan, but hurry it up. Yes, we'll be up here only a minute. This is his room? Mm-hmm. Cousin Jediah. Come in, come in. Oh, it's you, Daniel. Oh, oh, it's you, Hazel. Cousin Jediah, for goodness sake, aren't you ever coming downstairs? Be right along, be right along. Another half hour and I'll have the lame brain Santa Claus suit sewed up. But in another half hour... Yep, if... another half hour and I'll have this lame brain Santa Claus suit sewed up tighter than a sieve. But you're missing out on all the fun. Tighter than a sieve, as the saying goes. Tighter than a half-wit sieve. Oh, it's useless, Hazel. I'm afraid so. Hey, Mom, I'm dead. Come on. Look, we'll have to go. I'll be right along. Old Santa Claus will be right along any time now. <laughs> Did you ever know anybody who lives in himself like that? Seems quite happy and satisfied with the whole world. Hey, Mom, you and Dad are holding up the works. Yes, we're supposed to take our presents in. Well, up with them then. Yeah, yeah. that's your load, Dad. Mom, this is yours. Can you pick them up? We've got our arms loaded. Yes, I think I can carry these. Oh, okay, let's go. Here we come. Everybody close his eyes. Here we come, here we come. Everybody watch out for us. You put your packages in the branches of the tree. Yeah, okay. Watch out you don't disturb the decorations. Well, how about putting these boxes and round packages behind the tree? Uh-huh, hey, which fine. person are you shoving behind the tree? <laughs> <laughs> not yours, Cliff. Right. No, I'm hanging yours in the tree right now, Aunt Betty. Hey, hey. Margaret, you're not supposed to say that. <laughs> Thank you for the tip-off, Margaret. There, that's all of them. Oh, don't our presents make the tree look pretty? Uh, may we open our eyes? Sure. Open your eyes, everybody, and watch your mouth water. Oh. <laughs> oh. 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 Beautiful, beautiful. Fanny, you took the words right out of my mouth. <laughs> okay, Uncle Jack and Aunt Betty, hear the jingle bells. Oh, before Betty and I go out for our presents, we'd like to have Mom play our Christmas anthem. Huh? Uh-huh. Silent Night. We want that to come first for a special reason. Well, that always comes after all the presents are on and just before we partake of the buffet supper. Well, this time it's different, okay? Huh? How about it, Fanny? It's quite all right with me. Hey, what have you two got up your sleeve? That would be telling. Light at the piano all right, Mother Barbara? Yes, thank you, Nicholas. All right, everybody, settle down. Uh-huh, everybody quiet. Jadara, is anything the matter? Evening, Fanny. Evening, everybody. Uh, this is a fine time to interrupt. Evening, us. Hank. Evening, Claudia Margaret. <laughs> it just come over me upstairs what a spectacle I was making of myself. What in the world? If you'd wanted any dim wit Santa Claus, you'd have probably had one. Oh, that's all right. Probably Hank would have dressed up. If you would Maybe call... Clifford would have dressed up. Maybe Jack would have dressed up. Maybe Claudia Margaret would have dressed up. <laughs> just come to me upstairs. So, 
I throw the Santa Claus suit out the window. Oh, why? Throw it out the window. But you didn't need to do that. Always a bridesmaid, but never a Santa Claus. <laughs> yes, sir. You can write that on my tombstone. Jediah X. Barber, always a bridesmaid, but never a Santa Claus. <laughs> Because this is a very special Christmas, the Barbers revive a very special version of a great holiday classic. The title of our play is Ebenezer Scrooge Meets His Match, or Raising the Dickens with Dickens. Oh. Cliff <laughs> plays the part of Scrooge. Ah, humbug. If I could work my will, every idiot who goes about with Merry Christmas on his lips should be boiled with his own pudding and buried with a stick of holly through his heart. <laughs> <laughs> you nasty man. <laughs> Hazel is Mrs. Cratchit. And Nicky is Tiny Tim. Oh, I say. Christmas is all humbug. Tiny Tim is all humbug, too. Everything is all humbug. <laughs> oh, you're all humbug yourself, Mrs. Scrooge. Here, now, sit down and have a slice of roast goose and dressing and gravy. I hate roast goose. Well, at least have a cup of coffee. I hate coffee. What? Oh, I say, Scroogey, would you? I'll read you haven't tasted the new cheese and Sandman coffee. Uh, what's new about it? Why, the flavor, of course. The new blend is so much improved, it's a new coffee experience. Mm, pass your couple, man. You'll say this is no end, the richest, most flavorful coffee money can buy. And don't say humbug. Just taste it. Uh, what can I lose? The sugar and cream. Yes, the sugar won't do your disposition any harm. My disposition. Ah. Take a sip. Take a sip. Well, what do you say, Mr. Scrooge? Why, I, uh... <clears throat> Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, everybody. <laughs> oh, my, 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 what a wonderful day, what wonderful people, what wonderful coffee. Merry Christmas! <laughs> <laughs> That's right, folks. Not even Scrooge himself can taste the new Chase and Sanborn without saying it's the most satisfying coffee he ever tasted. So taste it. Taste it now. You get more flavor from finer coffees at its best and freshest. The new Chase and Sanborn is vacuum-packed at its flavor peak. No other container in the world can give you so much coffee goodness. Ask your grocer for improved Chase and Sanborn, the amazing new coffee sensation. You just heard Chapter 13, Book 64 of One Man's Family, written and produced under the direction of Carlton E. Morse for the makers of Chase and Sanborn Coffee and Fleischmann's Yeast. Chapter 14, entitled New Year's Eve with the Barber Clan, will come to you next week at this same hour. Christmas dinner calls for something special on the bread plate, too. You have a big selection of delicious rolls and buns, sweet or plain, and a host of dessert breads to choose from. So make sure it's something that suits the grand occasion. If you bake at home, use Fleischmann's yeast for never-failing, praise-winning results. Fleischmann's yeast is the vital spirit of fine home baking, the one essential that glorifies all the other ingredients. It's the little spark plug that brings the dough to life, transforms it into tempting, nourishing, delicious food. Get Fleischmann's for quick, sure-rising action. It's your dependable, right-hand helper every step of the way. And when the baking is done, notice the even texture, the airy lightness of the rolls, or whatever you've made. Taste their extra delicious flavor, thanks to Fleischmann's. Dependable, never-failing Fleischmann's gives you proud results every time. So, every time you bake at home, get Fleischmann's yeast, America's favorite for 80 years. <laughs> One Man's Family comes to you from California. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.